Hello value viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the Hornet and quite a lot of you guys have asked me to do a video showing the new ability in the Hornet to target MSI track files. Now, as I said, this is a fairly new ability and it's very much work in progress at the moment. The guys who make the Hornet have had to completely deconstruct how the radar works to add this functionality in and it's been added in at the moment over the next few weeks. At the time of making this video, it's mid-September 2025. The basic functionality was added about a month ago in the previous patch, so I figured I'd show you what we've got at the moment. As well as that, I personally haven't flown the Hornet in air to air for ages, probably over a year, so I suggest we use this as a very non formal guide to first refresh in our mind how the Hornet radar works, and then we can quickly tag on the end the extra bit of info about the MSI track files. If you are a Hornet Pro, this video will have no use to you at all. So let's get started. This is our Hornet, we're 26,000 feet, we're heading north. Coming towards us are four bad guys, three bad guys, one Angels 26, one Angels. Angels 19, 1 Angels 10, and we have AWAC support behind us. The first thing we're going to do is just to refresh our memories of how the Hornet works. So let's strip back the radar. We're going to go to data here. This is obviously our attack radar screen. We're going to turn off MSI. That is multi-sensor integration. We're going to turn off LTWS. That is latent track while scan. Both of them will be on as standard, but just as our quick radar refresher. We're going to get turn data off here back to our main screen. And to be honest, I'm doing this for myself just as much as you guys, just to refresh in our minds how this works. So, so far as standard, our radar is scanning in terms of elevation or altitude, one bar of elevation and a total azimuth of 140 degrees. You can see that has got us one hit or one brick, which is that little rectangle there, which is almost certainly going to be the guy on the left at 26,000 feet. That's the only one that we can see. If we wanted to see some more, we would have to increase the amount of bars that we scan in terms of altitude or elevation. Let's do that. And we should be able to pick up another guy. And now we've got two guys. To find out exactly how much altitude or elevation we're scanning, we need to make this screen soy our sensor of interest. To do that, we're going to press sensor control switch right. Because it's on our right screen, we get this little dude here. It's now sensor of interest. We move this guy, our cursor, around with throttle designator controller, or TDC, slew. And we can see if we put them at the same range from us being there to there, Currently at two bars, we are scanning an altitude of 34,000 feet to 19,000 feet. All super simple stuff. Now in terms of information gathering, which is what the Hornet radar is all about, without latent track while scan, without MSI, there's not much more we can do. If we were to move our TDC on top of either of these guys, we would garner no more information. All it's telling us is that they are things that the radar has picked up, nothing else. If we wanted to get more information, we would have to lock one of them up. And we could do that, if you remember, by putting the TDC on the guy and pressing TDC depress, or we could have the cursor anywhere. We could press sensor control switch right, and it would automatically lock up the track or the target that was nearest to us. Once you've locked the target, then you can find out information about them. But that's very old school. In the Hornet, it's more sophisticated. We can go to data. We can turn on latent track while scan. This allows us to garner in more information about the targets without having them actually tracked in a target lock. You see, if we've lost that guy there, that's probably because we need to add an extra bar now because he's moved a little bit closer to us. Let's see if he reappears. Yes, he does. Now, with latent track while scan, remember, if we move our cursor on top of the bad guy, or the guy, I should say, pause it there and do not lock him, we can actually get this extra information. The information, if we remind ourselves, is he is traveling at a speed of Mark 0 0.3. He is at 26,000 feet. That guy and that guy are unchanged. They are just telling us our elevation of scan. We can also see his HAFU, H-A-F-U, which allows us to determine whether he's friend or foe. Remember, the HAFU comes in two sections, an upper section there, which is currently a staple. That is the information garnered by our radar in terms of his state of friend or foe. What it's saying is that our radar has not determined yet whether he is a friend or foe. That's what the staple means. Also, the color represents that. Yellow, of course, means we don't know what coalition he is. Red, baddie, 
green goodie. In terms of offboard sensors, we can see that an offboard sensor has determined that these are actually hostile. The lower half of the Hafu comes from an offboard sensor like a wingman, like an AWACS. And you're going to say, hang on, how is an offboard sensor affecting this Hafu here if my MSI multi sensor integration is turned off? Well, it's because when I start the Hornet, MSI is turned on as standard. And once the AWACS has determined that this track here is a hostile, it will stay on like that. If there was no AWACS or I had turned MSI off quickly enough before he had been designated as a hostile by our offboard sensor, then the bottom half of the Hafu would be completely blank. But remember the rules of the F-18 radar, you need two factors of authentication to make him red as a full hostile, so he stays yellow. Now, in real life, that probably means a Hornet would not be allowed to fire at it. In DCS, we know that an offboard sensor like an AWACS will never lie. So the bottom half of the Hafu is showing hostile. We know that in game, we're pretty sure he's a hostile, and of course, we could go and fire on him. Also, there's a number in the middle, one, that's our firing order, which also represents the order of distance to us. So this guy here is number one, he's the closest to us. If I were to unpause, move over there, remember I'm not locking at, at the moment, I'm just using latent track while scan, and I've lost this guy, which is kind of weird and annoying, so we're gonna go and try and find out why. Probably need some more elevation of scan, off data, six bars, he should come back. And he's back, if I were to pause there, I know it's a bit hard to see, but he is Mark 0 0.3, he is 19,000 feet, he is number two in the firing order, or he is the second furthest away. Now, interestingly, this time, this track has been detected before the AWACS has been able to add his side of the Harfu because remember MSI is off now and he's just been picked up as a new track so it's actually really interesting stuff if you're a bit of a nerd like me so at this point we have determined we don't know what he is because our radar has not yet IFF'd him also nothing has come from an offboard sensor remember chevron hostile staple unknown curve or dome friendly so he stays only half a Hafu. As well as that, latent track wall scan allows us to see their tail or their direction. You can sort of see a little tail coming down there, showing that's his direction. Um, and that's what latent track wall scan will give us. Next, we're going to add on multi sensor integration. And this is all standard. It's purely a refresher, viewers, just to remember how this radar works. If you're like me and you have all these planes and you go months without flying them, then this is just the kind of stuff you have to do. So, data multi-sensor integration on right now we can see all these tracks and i'm just going to pause it there so we don't burn too much time away we've got what our radar can see which is that guy there and that guy there we've got what the AWACS can see so now this guy's hafu has been completed by the AWACS. so from my point of view my radar where he's unknown from the AWACS, it's a chevron so he is a hostile and finally, we get our MSI track added on. So this is a dedicated MSI track. These are tracks generated by my radar added to by the offboard sensor, by the AWACS. This guy here is purely from an offboard sensor. Why can my radar not see him? Well, because he's Angels 10. That is way below what my radar can scan at. Let me just prove that. There, at that range, the lowest I can see is 18,000 feet without slowing my radar down. So AWACS has sent me this MSI track file. Now, interestingly, it's fully half food. So diamond bottom and diamond top. And that's because I can't see him. I can't add my piece of the Hafu confirmation to it. So the way DCS works is it just fills it in fully as a hostile. It relies completely on the offboard sensor. We can see his direction is, is here, but that's all we've got. As it stands at the moment, if I were to move my cursor over him there, even with latent track while scan on, I would not get any extra information. Of course, my radar can't see him, and that's why. And that's as far as it used to go before the previous patch. I could target that guy. I could target that guy. I could target that guy and that guy, if you remember, with our launch and steer, or however we're going to use our targeting, of which there are various ways with this radar. But I could do nothing to that guy there other than know that there's something there. But now, with MSI track file targeting, I can actually shoot at that guy. To do that, I think I probably used a bit more no to do that i think what i'm going to do actually is i'm going to turn my bars down to one 
let that update. What that should do is lose that guy there. Re probably retain that guy there, we'll see. So what we've got now, if I pause, is that I've moved my elevation to a very narrow band. So I can see that guy, I cannot see that guy, I cannot see that guy. But AWACS can see that guy and this guy, and it's given them to me as MSI tracks. I can now target them, which is great. To do that, it's very simple. I move my cursor over to them, I press DDC press, and I've got that guy. And I could now go and shoot at him. If you remember, this is targeting range information coming along here. If I wanted to, do, I could add that guy there, and I could shoot at him as well uh, as a launch and steer pair but I don't really want to so I am just gonna go uh, this guy here and that's it really everything else is as it was before all on normal uh, symbology on the HUDs uh, we won't go through that again obviously I've done proper videos on this uh, air to air mode check AMRAM if I can remember the button there it is so that guy there AMRAM selected air to air mode press the trigger 13 miles is over there see if it works should steer right steering right and that should be the guy that we can't see call her modern tech best tech the fire at him and shoot at him super lovely so that's it that's a quick reminder of roughly how the uh, radar works in terms of what we care about today and what they've added the ability to target off-board tracks Massive caveat, as I said at the beginning, it's not complete yet. The main functionality is there, but there's some bits that aren't quite working properly at the moment. That will be fixed in the next patch, probably. Uh, I've got one more thing to add, which is refresh rate. Now, the refresh rate, if I were targeting a target that I could see with my radar, is quite high. Very high if I use a single target track. Medium high if I were to use a track while scan, both of which allow good uh, accurate targeting but the refresh rate of an MSI track is going to be much lower how low I don't know I don't even know if you know in real life because it's probably a dynamic process I mean how many aircraft is the AWACS servicing but what does a low refresh rate mean well it means that targeting at least until the AMRAM goes pitbull is not going to be that accurate what does that mean for us well if we're firing at an easy to see non-maneuvering target like we just did there well we don't have to worry at all it's probably going to work every time if it's a much more difficult to hit target kinematically and or kind of stealth wise then that may cause problems and moving forward as MSI targeted is developed we'll just have to see how we deal with that uh, that's what I've got to add at the moment viewers I hope that was useful as just a bit of an informal reminder and showing the uh, target of the MSI track files I'll probably do a, a better one a proper one when it's all fully fleshed out. I hope that was useful anyway, and bye-bye.